Everybody, say hello to Lil, the low impedance loop from W1VLF. I think you're going to enjoy this. W1VLF. Hey everybody, my name is Paul, W1VLF, and welcome back to the lab. Um, as a lot of you know, I do a lot of videos on loops. Um, and so far, we have not touched on anything that couldn't really be considered a high impedance loop. Um, and with high impedance loops comes uh, some, you know, some some issues. You like tuning, um, but you do get selectivity. They're they're pick up a relatively good amount of signal um, for the size. Um, but I always uh, was intrigued from many, many years ago, and I don't remember when, but there was a, uh, the, the, the Wellbrook loops and, and all those current type device loops. Um, this was maybe 15 years ago, something like that. And I thought, boy, I'm never going to be able to afford a $400 loop. Um, the prices were outrageous at that point. And I said, what's so fantastic about that preamp? How does that work? I really had no understanding. And so I developed kind of my own loop. <laughs> this is another, uh, it's a kind of, kind of funny. Uh, this is a low impedance loop. I'm going to call her Lil, the low impedance loop. And believe it or not, I used to sell this product. Not, of course, not in this form. I'll show you some pictures of that later on. But what you have here um, is a very um, non-critical environment antenna, non-critical non in dimensions, uh, non-critical in, in uh, diameter size, all that. It's um, essentially uh, a piece of half inch tubing, uh, a 10 foot piece cut into four two foot pieces with elbows and we'll go uh, I'll get some some closer uh, shots of this but it is a completely enclosed no openings uh, extremely rugged. It will lend itself really well to the outside world um, once you get it, you know, in, in the format. I built this one up really quick um, just for this video and um, I totally forgot about this. I thought you guys, some of you guys might be interested. So, um, my notebook. Uh, the, pros, the pros of this are, are that it doesn't require any tuning. Um, you don't have to resonate it across the AM broadcast band. Now that might be a problem for someone who has a very large uh, AM broadcast station right at their doorstep and they like the selectivity of a loop, um, of, a, of a resonant loop, and, and that provides them with some attenuation outside the narrow pass band of the loop. That's really, that's really um, a plus. But here, this kind of goes nice with SDRs. It's, it's very broad banded. Um, it's low impedance, and you'll see when I pull these nulls later, I can put my hands literally anywhere on here with a 30-something dB null and not see it change. The signal level doesn't change. Um, very, very nice nulls at the top. I'll show you this uh, a little bit closer. I built kind of a little tilting device. Not sure how well you can see that, but I'll do some, some handheld close-up. Um, it's really easy to build. It's pretty inexpensive, no litz wire required. And if you seal it up properly, um, I can, I'll show you pictures of that. Um, this is something I actually sold, and, and it worked fantastic for people who wanted to have a remote antenna. Oh, the other thing is low impedance, and then everybody knows if you want to play around with common mode chokes that high impedance antennas like active uh, uh, vertical elements and things like that seem to have more of an issue with common mode currents traveling out to the antenna. This is pretty much low impedance. So with that, I'm gonna mount it on the, on the device hereafter and we'll do some close-ups handheld and I'll explain what, what's going on. But four elbows, four two foot pieces of um, half inch pipe, three ferrite cores and a partridge in a pitch. And no, and one ferrite core for a uh, common mode choke to, to uh, decouple the feed line. Uh, and this critical feature here. So let me let me get it, let me set that up in in the uh, vise here, and I'll give you some more uh, information about it. And then we'll go over to the receiver, and we'll see. Geez, how good does this perform? How good are these nulls? Uh, and I got a couple special cases where there's a local broadcaster, 
and one that's 90 miles away that I'd like to hear and you know you just can't do it plunk that local one in the noise in the uh, null and the, the further away one just comes right up so let me let me set up for that gotta have the customary Okay, we're back handheld. Uh, please pardon the uh, shaky camera. That all that coffee I'm drinking doesn't help out much. Let's get uh, walk in there and take a closer look. So, at the bottom here, the first thing we have is um, the PVC coupling. Uh, this is what? Uh, let's see. What is this? I think it's inch and a half PVC. Not a hundred percent sure of that. Um, oops. But it's but it's whatever you have around. Okay, and this this pipe coupling here allows us to swing Lil around and around, and I think she enjoys that. Sort of like dancing, I guess, right? Any anyhow, um, let's get to some of the guts here. So there's a common mo choke. This keeps the uh, RF from my coax cable that's coming in here from getting up into this core and the coupling sy system for the loop. Now, I, I've said this many times before, but it deserves, because it's, it's that important. Keep, make your antenna be the antenna and your coax be the coax. You don't want this coax cable coming from the receiver to be part of your antenna system, unless you deliberately want that. Um, and what do I mean by that is if you achieve a really good null by rotating this loop and tilt, using the tilting mechanism here to, uh, to tilt it, um, you don't want this coax cable bringing a whole bunch of local signal in and spoiling that loop. Excuse me, spoiling that null. You went through a lot of work to get this, this antenna really re working properly. Um, so let's always remember to decouple that coax cable, then we can evaluate this. Um, let's take a swing, swing, uh, let's see if I can swing her around. Okay, so the coupling, lo the uh, decoupling loop. Uh, as you can see, I'm using um, SMAs because I wanted to keep the connections as short as possible. Here's the uh, coupler to the loop itself. It's three turns. Yeah, that's that's beautiful craftsmanship right there. But I didn't have time to machine up a whole bunch of stuff for this, so you'll <laughs> have to bear with me. Um, the other thing I always like to say is remember what your cores are. Remember because all cores are are different. Um, you know, I typically will write on my cores with a, with a, for instance, this is a number 75, 2 inch, 2.4 inch, number 75, and these have a hole in them that are about the same size as this, which is 0.625, um, 625 thousandths. It's 5 eighths on the outside and I think half inch on the inside, but regardless. And these cores, I have no idea where they came from. So how did I determine, um this ratio of turns here. Let's see what that is. It's three. It's two turns on three cores. I simply did an experimentation. Soldered everything up except for one joint right here that I could push this out and disconnect this joint right here. And then I put on two cores and five turns and I looked at some local signals that were very stable. Not, you know, and then I played with the turns ratio. Um, again, this is just one turn and two here. This optimized the signal strength for the AM broadcast band. I tried three cores, I tried four cores, three cores had the maximum signal on, on local stations that were relatively uh, stable in amplitude. And four turns on here didn't, uh, didn't work as well. One turn didn't, didn't work as well. So two turns ended up being the optimum amount of, of turns. And again, I don't know what these cores are, the material. And I apologize for that, but they were out of old switching power supplies when I was into scrapping equipment and things. So we'll just like give you a, uh, show you Lil's form here. Copper there, uh, copper elbow there, and then we come up to the center. Oh, there's a clip lead. Look at that. I got clip. I even have clip leads holding the lights in place. Um, here's here's a little piece that I made, uh, and all this does is allow you to uh, tilt the loop this way or that way. And in this environment, when you're down below the earth and, and this antenna, this point right here is literally, I don't know, six or eight inches below the earth. 
So the earth starts right here because I'm in a basement hole. And so this is a, a foot above the top of this loop is a foot above the ground. And that's it. Um, so extremely simple to, to build. Four connections. Um, this piece of PVC pipe here just has a hole through it and I pushed it through. And then there was another hole right here. Get out of those lights. See if that, that'll... There was another hole, that, uh, but I chopped it off because I, I didn't want it to be uh, a perfectly vertical... Get out of here. To be a perfectly vertical loop, I wanted the ability to, to tilt it. And then you can lock it down with this, with this arrangement over here. So, all right. Anyway, so that's, that's what the loop is like. And uh, we're going to hook up to uh, the SDR over there. And we're going to do some, some testing on some uh, local channels. We'll see what kind of nulls we can pull out of this. Um, let's see. Back when I bought this copper tubing, I think it, this, prob this whole thing probably cost me about 10 bucks to build. Copper tubing is a lot more expensive than that nowadays. But. So let's uh, fire up the SDR and see what happens. And I'll be back. All right, so it looks like we're back. I'm going to be using a microphone. I'm going to be using this microphone over here. Hopefully uh, the audio will come out okay. Um, okay, so we start, let's, <laughs> down here at 540 kilohertz, here's our old friend, the, uh, the monitor. Right? All that monitor noise. Let's just see how, how well this loop works at, if we try and null that noise out. Let's just swing it around. Okay, totally gone. <clears throat> if I touch, if I touch it, the loop itself, no difference. Doesn't detune, and it doesn't, it doesn't detune, and it doesn't. Uh, uh, the, the nulls don't go away. There's a little bit of static when I first touch it, but that's uh, from the the static electricity in the air. So, all right. So here we go. Let's uh, swing it back around. Look at that. Now it's pointed right at it. And we'll we'll null it out. So if you had a station there, it'd be really nice to be able to do that. Okay, let's move up the band here to uh, five five forty. And let's try doing some nulling here. Okay, so what do we get there? Uh, let's let's narrow the bandwidth up a little bit first, so we're not list looking at a oh, whole boy. This computer must be slow. All right, so this one's only an S6. It's down in New York City. We'll try and null that out completely. Okay, hear all that noise in the background? That's what's left. That's, that's my noise floor in this environment. And that's the other thing I think I should talk about really quick is that the, once you get an antenna that's physically big enough to overcome, to, to add noise to your receiving system, um, wherever that may be. Inside here, a bigger loop would not do me any good. Although outside, it probably would. I've made one of these at four feet on a side, uh, and that was absolutely phenomenal. Worked fantastic. So, um, but you can see that we've we've taken a null, taken it right into the noise, into the local ambient noise. There happens to be one right underneath there. So, okay, let's move up the band a little bit here. Uh, 560 in Springfield. Okay, we're going to cover a couple special cases. This is just kind of a zoomer on the band. Here we go. Kind of pointed at it. Let's, let's do a null up towards the Springfield area. Okay, yeah, it's not nulling very good. Let's see if, if the null in the other direction. There it is, because that's the direction that has the tilt in it. Okay, so tilting that. Listen to that garbage. Oh my god, that's that's really noisy. Tilting, okay, here's one direction. Mm -hmm. Let's swing Lil around the other direction. Here I can get a null, but not that great. If I swing her back around the other way, I can take her right into the noise. So let's move up the band. Don't want to be here all day, do we? Let's try 880 in New York City. It's a 50K in New York. Just cover these really quickly. 
Okay, so that's what the signal normally looks like. S S A almost S nine. Looks like I got to get a faster computer here. It keeps locking up. Let's see what we can do with a null here. That's a you know a fair null. But let's try it in the other direction. And you can also adjust this up here for more or less tilt. So you can find really optimum nulls. Okay, let's move up. Let's try uh, 1080, which is a 50K. This is a 50 kilowatt in that direction. So 20 over S9. And then let's move, uh, let's try and, and null that guy out. Okay. So, meh. So, so. Let's try it with the tilt in the other direction. Okay, even better. Let's add a little bit more tilt up there. Maybe, maybe too much. This is kind of an interactive process. Okay, let's go a little bit more tilt and see what happens. Okay, that looks that looks good. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. Let's see what happens. So less than an S7 from 20 over S9. Now we're in the middle of that null, and watch this. I'm going to put my hands all over the loop. And you don't see dramatic changes in shift in frequency or shifts in, uh, in the null. Let's, uh, let's swing that baby back towards... Let's swing a little around here and get her back up to twenty over or so. And let's uh, let's move up to fourteen ten. This is a uh, another uh, I don't know local. This one's maybe thirty miles away. Let's see what we can do with this one. Okay, right. seems to like it. Okay, so an S2 or so. And again, you can see my hand in the inset here. Um, touching this, zero change. Touching the ferrite, zero change. Touching the coax, zero change. From right at the noise, granted it's my noise is pretty high, to about S9 or so. Not bad, huh? Let's see, uh, what else do we have? Uh, let's try something out in New York City. This is in a direction where there's a whole hell of a lot of uh, of metal in the area. So let's let's see what we got here. Got a little over S S9 or so. Okay. Let's try tilt a little bit of tilt here. Oh, I think I might have tilt. So. Not as much on that station. Let me try a little more tilt and see what happens. Nah, there's probably an optimum spot here. Well, I know there is. Just that I don't want to stretch this video out to two hours long to try and figure out where it is. So, um, let's go uh, one more, 710. Then we'll go up to our, our two interesting special cases. Let's put this guy in the middle. And again, my noise floor without a preamp with this two foot loop is great. A four footer worked even better as far as signal strength, about another six dB. Uh, but bigger than that, pff, didn't make any difference. So here's a, here's a New York City station. Uh, not particularly strong, is it? It's S7. Let's try to know this guy out. Uh, not that much. Her doctors literally oh, the, the notch is much better on tilted on the other side this time. So this one prefers a, a, a sort of offset here to the back. So it's totally gone. Um, let's move up to our, our special cases here, which are in memory segment number two. And the, I may have to mute the audio on these because there's music on some of these stations. But let's take a look at uh, 1120 here. There is. Okay. Um, looking at my notes, 1120 is WPRX. It's a one kilowatt that's nine miles away from me. And you can see it's, uh, 
I don't know, S9 plus 6, 7, something like that. And then you have over here, and I will, uh, I'll, I'll turn it, the audio back up here in a second, and then I'll move over. That's 1130. Okay, that's 1130. That's a 50K out of New York, which is about 85 miles away. And you can see the sidebands here just completely obliterating it. Let's see what we could do about nulling this local guy out and listening to the New York City station. Sometimes the best information or the insights you pick up are not looking at a stat sheet, but just having a conversation okay. or running into someone or seeing Quite interesting. Someone. Okay. Let's just see what the, uh, I'm going to have to mute this for a second, what the actual amount of null here that we can get is. Uh, so S9 plus, uh, when I'm pointing at it, 6, 7, down to, I don't know, S5 or so, S6. Let me see what happens in the other direction. If, if it, this one here doesn't seem to uh, care all that much about the tilt. Well, maybe it does. Let's try a little bit more tilt and see what happens. There we go. So if you had a quiet noise floor, you, you'd probably see that. All these, see these little carriers over here? They're probably causing some, some issues here. But let's go up to, uh, okay, here, before I change it. Okay. Let me go up to uh, 11.30 now. Ah, have a little more coffee. Okay, so totally obliterated. That was uh, a special case, and you probably have ones just like it. <laughs> uh, you don't want to hear that crap. Okay, so here comes special case number four, uh, two. And this is, uh, let's see, okay, 1230. Um, 1240 is the uh, offender here, let's call it. It's WWCO, it's a kilowatt, and it's about uh, 10 miles away, 9 miles away. And let's see if they have music playing or not. It looks like it. Nope. Okay, good. So S9 plus 4. Let me, let me peek up on it. Okay, and we'll try to null it out and see where we can go with that. Okay, right into the noise. And meanwhile, this station, 1130, I got to, I have to mute that, unfortunately. Um, that station is easily copyable. Now, that's, that's a one... Um, Let's see, that's a one kilowatt, 26 miles away. So this really, really works well. Um, you can see as I move this. Boy, I, I do need a faster computer for this because it seem, keeps, keeps locking up. Um, I guess uh, that's all I have right now. Um, try and show some close-ups and some pictures of the loop um, as it used to be when I, when I sold these. And... Um, they worked out really well. People really uh, enjoyed them, and, uh, and you know they enjoyed the nulls. And I totally forgot about this until till just today, no, till uh, till Monday. And I thought maybe you guys would enjoy seeing this. So um, try and give you some pictures of what the finished product looked like. Um, was perfectly uh, impervious to weather. Um, and uh, could spend outside. Anyway, if you guys uh, enjoyed this or, or any of my other loop videos, can you do me a favor and please subscribe? I'm up to um, 1,380 subscribers now, and my next goal is 2,000, and it takes a little bit of time to, uh, to make these. So if you could please subscribe or share this or give me a thumbs up or all the above, I would certainly appreciate it. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. And I think this is going to be the end of this video, but I'm not sure. There may be some, uh, some more photos. Yeah, no, it's not. There's going to be some more photographs that I'll show at the end so you can see things a little clearer. Thanks again, everyone, for joining me. This is W1VLF.
and Lil. Lil, the low impedance loop, um, saying, I guess 73 for now. Okay, guys, I'm over here by the um, the test bench, if you will, um, where I hopefully have told you uh, that I have an air, um, an air spy discovery connected at the bench here. Uh, <clears throat> and what we're doing is, uh, it's Friday night right now, about quarter after 6, something like that, 621. And what I'm trying to do is to uh, show you what this thing does at night. Now, it's not really designed to uh, to do much above the broadcast band, but uh, let's go through and take a look at something, some stuff here, um, just using um, this antenna. And right now, let's see, we have the preamp, uh, let's turn the preamp off, okay, and our noise floor, we'll go in DBM, well, we'll, we'll go in DBM, so it, it shows basically the noise floor of the... Um, of the radio itself. So I'm going to connect an antenna, or my antenna, the, the loop that we're talking about here. And there's a whole, looks like a whole bunch of uh, FT8 on this frequency. But let's let's go down to, uh, uh, well, here, watch, we'll, we'll do a, like a quick, okay, there's the AM broadcast band. Notice the preamp is, preamp is off here. Okay, so let's go up to uh, 1800 or so. Let's see, I can't hear that guy yet. Okay, now I can. Okay. So this is um, 160. Of course, there's a bunch of noise right over here. I don't know what that is, but... So let's, let's look at 160 again with no antenna on. And look at where that noise drop floor drops to. Okay. So it, it drops right to the bottom. So let's connect the antenna back up. Find a quiet spot. Hopefully, uh, I don't know what, right here. We can hear atmospheric noise already just with the antenna or other things that happen to be in the house here. Let's just turn the preamp on. So this is just that two foot copper loop again. Okay. So we're well above the internal noise of the receiver now. So let's poke around a little bit, see. Let's see, I, I'm on fast uh, AGC, so I'm going to go to slow. And we'll go back to DB uh, uh, S units here, make it a little easier. So it's pretty quiet. That's an S5. We'll go up through the bands here. Let me squeeze this up a little bit more. Um, look at all that garbage. I don't know what that is. The TV set running upstairs. Here, here's somebody on 1930. So, not a not a great antenna for 160 meters. Well, let's look a little. Let's go up a little further and see if there's anybody else around. And again, it's only a quarter after six at night here, so there's a couple other guys. And I can't do this during the day because there's absolutely nobody on. So if this is your only antenna, you know, this might, this might work out okay. That's 160 inside the house, remember, not an external antenna inside the house. Let's, let's move up to uh, 75 meters. And, I don't know, let's grab a hold of... Uh, I don't know, let's say this guy right here. This guy looks pretty good. Let's try. Center him up. Another station here. Okay. Here's that stuff up above 4,000. There's, uh, I don't know if it's some sort of teletype or telemetry. Go down to uh, let's go down to around 1885, and I mean uh, 1938, uh, uh, 39. Wow, 3885. Let's see if there's any of the AM guys on. Oh, here's somebody. Go to AM mode. In the center here. 
Well, guess we're not talking anymore. Go back to the lower side bin and grab a hold of this guy. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, good. Good hearing you too, uh, Ray. Good to hear you, man. Just to give you an idea of what it, what, how, you know, how well it works there. The, the, the noise will go to, uh, we'll go to, uh, okay, so noise level is about S1 or so. And, uh, a couple more guys, let's try a little bit more over here. And I'm going to go up, up uh, to, seven, to 40 meters now and see if there's any activity up there. Oh, you know what I want to do first? I want to look at uh, CHU up in Canada, which is on 3330. <laughs> No preamplifiers, uh, external, or anything like that. Preamp is on, but I will turn this one off. Let the AGC come back. Still a beautiful copy. Okay, let's go up to uh, 40 meters now and take a look. So, uh, we're still out of band. Oh, let's do AM broadcast uh, shortwave. That's no preamp on. Let's disconnect the antenna and see where the noise drops to here. Okay, right down to nothing. We'll narrow, uh, let me let me go to uh, this filter, let me, and let's just push it over here where there is no signals. So we have an S0 noise level, and here's one shortwave station at uh, S7, S8. Really strong copy. Put put the preamp on if that makes us happy here, and go back. And so now it's like uh, S9 or so. All right, so let's see what else is on seven on uh, 40 here. Let's see if we can find... Oh, there's some guys on 40. Let's go to a uh, lower sideband and see what we can hear. Put him in the center. A couple of much stronger signal. So it, it looks like it makes a reasonable antenna. Again, I couldn't do this um, tomorrow in the morning when I'm going to be doing the AM portion of this. So I just wanted to uh, just wanted to show you. Oh, um, geez, I wonder if there's anyone on 60 meters. What is that? 53. No, that's the uh, FT8 frequency on 60 meters. You can tell that anywhere, right? So, um, it's not an outdoor antenna. Not designed to be. Designed to uh, work inside here. And, um, hey you guys, if, uh, if you think this is interesting, let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate it. And if you have any questions, uh, hopefully they were all answered in the previous section, which I'm doing tomorrow. So if this sounds a little bit disjointed, it's because I'm doing this not in my normal order. So back to the rest of the video. Thanks a lot, and I'm out of here.